In this video, I wanted to talk about the new updated PWK exercises for the extra credit. You know, is it worth it to actually go and complete that massive PDF and how much time you're really looking at? And is it, of course, is it worth it, right? And one thing I will say as well is that I have just launched the real world pen testing course. I'm teaming up with a senior software developer on this one. It's an entire training ground, actually where there's going to be real software developers um, that enroll through um, Josh from Developer Direction and, you know, all of you guys that enroll through through me as pen testers. And they're going to be creating, the devs are going to be creating an actual real application. And uh, we're going to be testing it just like you would in an actual pen testing job and finding vulnerabilities, producing a report, sending it to the developers so that they can make sense of it and try and fix the vulnerability. This is going to be a, a way to very quickly and easily get real world experience that you could put on a resume and that you can learn from as well and um, not even have to have a job to do that, which is amazing. Um, one of the biggest issues is exactly that, right? And it's also going to tackle the issue if you're not exactly 100% sure if this is something you want to do, uh, be a pen tester, do you want to be a developer? Maybe you're going to have the opportunity to write some code as well and um and team up with those developers and get experience on that side. So a great way to, you know, be able to figure out, is this something that you're even interested in before you sink all the hours required um, to actually be job ready in either one of these fields. So definitely check it out down in the description below. I uh, have a link that will give you a lot more detail than I'm able to cover uh, in this short clip here, but I'll see you guys right down there. And so first of all, let's get to the length. The PDF itself is over 850 pages of content. Now, there are a lot of screenshots in there, so that does kind of soften it a little bit, but make no mistake, this thing is massive, and it takes a ton of time to complete, and I was speeding through a lot of it, to be honest, and it even, for me, took two months to do. Now, I must admit that uh, I think I did go out of town like while I was working on that and stuff, so I took some days off for vacation and things like that, so I could have definitely got it done quicker than two months, but I definitely think that if you are someone that's coming in fresh, coming in new to the PWK, the OSCP, with you know without a ton of prior experience, I think that at least two months is what it would look like to complete that. Now, offensive security has stated multiple times that they believe that even though the material takes a long time to complete for the extra credit, they do not recommend skipping it and just going straight into the labs. Now, I've seen a lot of articles and people out there that recommend doing exactly that, of just skipping the PDF and going straight into the labs and spending all of your time on the lab environment. And I really have to say, I think it is a mixed bag. You know, it, some people have done that successfully, others have not. And I think ultimately, if you're on a time crunch, I would say it's okay to skip the PDF and go straight into the labs. If you're someone who knows what you're doing, right? If you have an idea of pen testing already, I think you can definitely get away with it. It is a viable strategy because if you look at offsex documentation as well, you know, there's a huge correlation between the number of lab machines that you're able to compromise and the pass rate on the exam. So just so you guys know, there's about 70 machines in the lab total. And what they found is that everyone's pass rate has been below 50% until the point that they have rooted at least, I believe, 51 machines in the lab. So I, I would say that, you know, I wouldn't call it a mistake, the fact that I spent two months doing the, the extra credit or anything like that, but I probably would have been better served to just go straight into the labs. Now, with that being said, I wanted to get the value of the learning out of the OSCP, right? It's not just getting the certification for me. I want to, I want to learn all the stuff that it has to teach me, all the stuff that it has to offer. And so if you fall into that category, or if you fall into the category of being someone that's relatively new to pen testing, then I would definitely recommend to just go ahead and focus on the, on the PDF guide first, because it's going to teach you a bunch of strategies, some of them that are beyond the scope of what you're going to see on the actual OSCP exam. So for example, you know, there it used to be even more so, right, when there was Active Directory in the PDF, but not Active Directory 
in the exam. Now, I mean, there is a lot more of a correlation there, but they do show you some kind of above and beyond things that are pretty neat, like some AV bypasses and, and stuff like that. Nothing as crazy as what you would see in OSEP or anything like that, but still some pretty cool techniques and extra stuff they include in that PDF guide. That's definitely very good to know, very solid to know. So with all that being said, I would say that I would actually recommend it for, for the vast majority of people to do the PDF. Now, how, how long did it, my report end up being, right? Because keep in mind, if you want the extra credit, it's not even just doing the PDF. It's uh, doing all the exercises in the PDF. Plus, you have to do a write-up on at least 10 machines. And one, of, one set has to be an Active Directory. So you have to include an Active Directory set in those 10 machines. That way they can verify that you put some time into Active Directory. But really, I haven't found Active Directory on the lab to be particularly difficult or anything like that. And I'm the type of person that likes to do write-ups on every box that I do anyways, at least reproduction step kind of write-ups. So I didn't really have a problem with this. Personally, I was going to do it either way. But for me, it was really... <laughs> sinking the time into the actual PDF guide itself and going through all of those exercises uh, that was so cumbersome. I'm going to be honest, it was a drag. At one point, that was part of the reason that I kind of eased off the gas a little bit on preparing for this because it just felt like such a grind after a while. But then again, if you're coming in completely fresh, it might be exciting the whole time. So your mileage may vary there. But keep in mind that the big change that came in recently was the fact that the extra credit went from being worth five points to now being worth 10 points. And that exam change or, and that PDF length change to the 850 pager that happened way before. So at one point you were going to do an 850 page, you know, PDF and 10 machines just for five bonus points. I would say it was absolutely not worth it back then, but now I think it is with the 10 points because Think about it this way. This is what it could allow you to do. Those 10 points, right? If you if you were able to say that you completely failed on the Active Directory portion, you could not get domain admin. Well, if you root all of the standalone machines and get the extra credit and get full points for your report, then theoretically you could pass the exam without getting Active Directory at all. Now, aside from that, if you do not do the extra credit, then you have to get the you absolutely have to get the active directory set to even be able to pass it. Cause the AD set is worth 40 points on the exam. Um, so that, that is one thing to consider. And it's basically worth the exact same as a, as a flag on a standalone machine. So if there's one flag that you're short of that, you can't quite get to hit your, you know, the required number of points, the 70 points, then you can use the extra credit, um, to make up for that. So I would definitely say that it's worth it for most people in most scenarios. And just so you guys know, when it was all said and done, my lab report for the extra credit ended up being 573 pages. Pretty insane. I think definitely the longest report I've ever written. <laughs> the longest uh, anything that I've written since I've joined the field of offensive security, since I joined the, since I joined the field of pen testing and red teaming. So this thing is a monster, uh, make no mistake about it. But hey, if you're in here to learn, if you're in here because you want to learn as much as possible, why not get the maximum amount of value possible? And if you did get like, say the Learn One or Learn Unlimited subscription, then it's not as big of a deal, right? Because you're going to have that extra time anyways. But if you're on a really tight time crunch and you're trying to pass it on your next go around and you already have some experience in this, I'd say that you're okay to skip it if you're confident in your skill set. So that's what I would say on this. Let me know what your opinion is down in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, we'll start that discussion. I'd love to hear what you guys say. You'll chime in. Maybe some of you guys have passed this thing before and you might have some really valid points as well that I might not have mentioned. So yeah, if you want to get into some technical content as well, I have it on the screen for you right now. I'll see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.